Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. Today I'm gonna talk about gradient descent and how you can implement it in Python completely from scratch. If you are if you are familiar with gradient descent and know how it works, then you are free to skip this portion and jump to the implementation part directly. But if you are not familiar with gradient descent and don't understand it quite well, then today you are here for a real treat. So let's get started. So what the heck is gradient descent? First of all, it is an iterative algorithm. So what is an iterative algorithm? Well, uh, iterative algorithm is an algorithm uh, where you need to perform one particular step iteratively many times and after performing it that amount th that many times you will reach your final result okay and it is used to find a minimum of a differentiable function so why a minimum because uh, let us suppose we have a function and we want to find the minimum you can see that here is one minimum, here is one minimum, and here is another minimum. So gradient descent does not guarantee that it will always find the global minima. It can find this one or this one or this one. So that's why I have mentioned it finds a minimum of a differentiable function. So what is a differentiable function? Well, a differentiable function is a function which is smooth like that. So uh, what will be a non-differentiable function then? Well, a non-differentiable function may be something like that. And in this case, you cannot use gradient descent. Another example may be suppose here. In these two cases, the function is not even defined. So it is not differentiable and we cannot apply gradient descent to these functions. Okay, so let me just erase these things. Okay, so why do we need gradient descent in machine learning? The simple answer is to minimize our cost function and to find the corresponding optimal parameters. So what is a cost function then? Well, a cost function is a measure of the deviation of our model's prediction from the ground truth. So to uh, explain this, let us take a simple example of a linear regression. Suppose we have a data set like this. Okay. And we would like to get this line as our model. So this is our hypothesis and we want to find this theta one and theta zero to draw this line okay so we have defined a cost function so here the cost function is just the differ the squared difference between our prediction and global truth and we will minimize it why we will minimize it because after minimization we will get a line which fits our model in the best possible way it can Okay, so our goal is to minimize this j of theta 0 and theta 1. Well, j is typically denotes the cost function. Okay, so we are going to use gradient descent to minimize our j. So now let us come to the portion where we will know how it is going to work. So uh, let me start with a simple 1D example and then I will show you a 2D example and then the concept can be expanded to ND case. Okay, so first let me assume a simple graph. Uh, well, this is the J of theta as 1D case. I am denoting it just by theta and this is the theta and this is how our curves look like. So forget about the point for a moment and for and let us consider that this is a cross section of the hill and you are just standing here and you are asked to reach this minimum of this hill now remember that we are looking at this picture from a far perspective from a big picture perspective that's why we can easily say that if you move in this direction you will reach this minimum height but you being standing on the hill you cannot see the big picture 
you can only observe your surroundings and by observing your surroundings only you need to decide which way to move so that you can reach this minimum height so what will you do you will just see your surroundings and find the way of downhill and move in that direction this is you just look into surroundings see that this is the downhill and move this side and again move along the side and by doing this you will eventually reach here so good for you so now let me erase you from this picture and uh, bring our point and let us see how our algorithm does the exact same thing that you did okay suppose our initial point is here so our algorithm will find the downhill slope from its surroundings how well if you are familiar with calculus then you must know what a slope is so our algorithm will just find the slope of this tangent at this point and will move this point in the negative direction of the slope that is if this is the positive direction and this is the negative direction of the slope right so our point will move here then again it will calculate the slope and we'll see which is the downhill that is which is the negative direction of the slope and move our point here and by iteratively doing this process our algorithm will actually will eventually move the, our point from here to here and so now comes the concept of learning rate what is learning rate well actually this denotes how much we are moving the point in our algorithm if alpha is too big then it will perform big steps suppose it may happen that first step here second step here third step maybe here and you just reach it in three steps but if it is too much then it may happen that first step is here second step here third step here fourth step here and it will just brew out and you it will never able to reach the minimum in the contrary if learning rate is too small it may happen the step size is too small that is here first step second step here third step here fourth step here fifth step here and it will take a tremendously long amount of time to reach it okay so learning rate is important so now update simultaneous update actually but as it is a one dimensional case we won't be able to see the simultaneous update here but uh, in the next case i'm going to show you the simultaneous update where we will have two inputs and one output okay so let me just uh, finish this 1d case by writing this update this is actually the update i have written already for the 2d case i am writing the 1d case update okay let me just change the color so 1d case update will be theta this is the new theta will be previous theta minus learning rate times derivative of j theta with respect to theta well actually this thing is the slope and this negative sign denotes that we are moving our point in the negative direction of the slope and this alpha is by how much we are taking the step in the negative direction so i hope the 1d case is pretty clear to you so now let me move into the 2d case where i will have two input parameters and one output which is just j okay i am denoting uh, this as z remember that z is actually the j x and y basically j z is the function of x and y and in this case also j was the function of theta so let me just draw a, a portion of our curve in three dimension suppose this is our curve and uh, let me just take a point on this curve and again i need to do some constructions here Uh, 
please notice that this line is actually parallel to this x-axis and I'm drawing another cross section sorry and this line is actually parallel to our y-axis okay so by drawing this planes so what I have just done I have just made the sections so let us first look into this this cross section okay just for one moment forget everything except this cross section what we have here look that this plane is this whole plane is actually parallel to our z y plane so x is not changing clearly so we can just draw a tangent at this point and uh, to this curve so what will it denote well it will just denote the partial of z with respect to y yes because z is uh, x is constant here and this is just a line and just like the 1d case we can define this tangent and we have used this symbol instead of d just to denote that it is a partial not the exact okay similarly we can draw another line tangent to this and that will considered as the partial of z with respect to x now look at this thing closely this is the slope denoted by partial of z with respect to x and which is then what is the positive direction of the slope you can pretty much see that this is the downhill and this is the uphill so let us just consider a vector along this direction well this vector is purely parallel to x and has no component other than x so I can write this vector as this right and you may see that why it is in that direction not in this direction because the value of the slope is negative here just try to rotate this curve in your mind and you will find that uh, if you just look at this uh, z and x direction and there will be this thing and the tangent will be like that and you can see that this angle is more than 90 degrees that's why it is in negative direction so allow me to erase this portion it will just mess it up okay now similarly look at this tangent and the positive direction is in actually this direction so again a vector parallel to y axis we can denote it by just like that okay and it has no component call say it has no z component or x component purely y component now we can add these two vectors and in the picture it will be like that and it will be denoted as gradient of z and what our gradient gradient descent says that if we move our point in just the negative direction let me change the color negative direction here and this will let us reach our minimum value this is actually what gradient descent algorithm says to move in the opposite direction of the gradient and uh, gradient denotes the direction of the highest change so we are going to just move in the opposite direction and but from the picture it is also clear that if we continue to move in this direction we will reach a minimum and uh, for a clarity we can just project the whole thing in xy plane 
so this is the vector uh, vector this this vector and this is this vector and this is the gradient and the opposite in the opposite direction we are going to move in this direction we are interested to move in this direction so we need to update x and update y just like this and here comes the concept of simultaneous update so why simultaneous update is needed and what does it even mean suppose you first calculate uh, this thing uh, Just remember this theta 0 denotes x and theta 1 denotes y. So if you can uh, compute this and compute this and say if you first perform this step and now remember that our theta 0 changed so in this step here while calculating the derivative the partial derivative with respect to theta 1 suppose this uh, this function actually is something like uh, say this something like I'm just uh, arbitrarily assuming so in this case the theta just changed from here so we cannot use it so what we need to do is to up perform the operations first perform these things first then change this thing simultaneously at the end and we implement this in our code by just a temporary variable okay so now I hope that you are comfortable with the concept of gradient descent and know how it works at least at an intuitive level so in the next video i will be just showing you how you can code gradient descent algorithm in python from scratch and and the function i will be minimizing with gradient descent uh, is this let me just write the function for you in this video f of w equal to 3 w 0 square plus 4w1 square minus 5w0 plus 7 and uh, remember that this w is actually a vector which contains w1 and w0 and w1 and in machine learning things this vector is frequently used that's why I have written this like that uh, it is basically just equal to x and this is just equal to y and you can translate this uh, function just like that so if you are feeling more enthusiastic about machine learning after learning this gradient descent then please like and share this video and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching Thank you.